Hello everyone, in this video we are going to learn about how to read from a closed excel file using ADODB. So this video is only applicable for Windows based excel, ADODB is not available on Mac. So I have this sample data file and I have two different sheets on this file, one is sample calls and more calls. So the sample columns has a smaller data set like you know, you can see I think it has around up to column P, we have data up to column P, okay. So we have only 16 columns of data and we have around 466 rows, so rows doesn't matter. And we do have more columns where we have lots of column, actually it's like you know 1563 is column. So we are going to learn both of these that how can we pull data from this as well as this and this has a little bit creative way to pull this data so keep watching for that one so we'll use this sample columns okay and so i put the file in the same folder as this one so i don't need to hard code that file pair okay so first of all we need to set reference to adodb microsoft active data object library 6.1 now if we use that then we could say like you know ADODB connection instead of create object in that case we could do new ADODB connection. So I just copied some bare bone code okay. So we create a connection object and then we instantiate it and this is the most important part that connection is string. So we have provider and if we are uh, pulling data from excel file then we need this provider data source that is the file path so basically this file path is the full file path so if we know that this file is on the same folder as this excel file so if i just say okay this workbook dot path and application dot path separator and then the name of that file so that is sample data file dot excel sx so let me just copy that so this will be the sample file path and if we just copy path and paste it here you can see the same path so this is the file path right so that is the excel file path so team file path and file path is going to be this okay sample so the file path is this workbook.path application.path separator and then sample data file dot excel sx so we get the data source that is the file path extended property is excel 12.0 xml header so if you will put header yes if you have header in that file path if it doesn't then you can say no but in my cases we have header so that's why yes okay now we need to create a record set object so we can say adio db dot record set and same here new ADODB record set. So with ADODB record set we set a active connection to this connection and then cursor type 3 so if you just use cursor type and then you can check this in the object browser I guess. Ah. ADODB cursor type so you can find out this 3 is for add open static. Okay. So let me just code again. So 3 because I was using early bindings that's why that was 3. Okay now this part is not needed yet. So now if we want to pull the data from the sample columns worksheet then we could just say okay dot source equals to select all from and then we need to put the seat name. So that was like sample calls and then we need to end that seat name with dollar sign that is mandatory so make sure you keep that and then this so this is the source and if we just open then we will get the data so let's try this and let's see if this is running fine or not so press f8 to execute this code and you get this source okay so how do you know that we have the data or not so initially right now we can see in the local window if i go into the local window the record set object and if you look at this that fails then you'll see 16 fields as you remember column up to p so that is the symbol column first and then date column and so on right so that is the field and then we do have the data so page count 47 you can see record count is 465 right so we do have the data 
Now we want to push this data to somewhere like in this sheet. Okay, so we can say okay, one dot range one dot copy from record set, and we can say okay, record set object. Let's see. And if I look this, then we'll see that it's putting that data right here. Right? This problem is that it doesn't put the header. I guess. Yeah. It doesn't put the header so we can look through and then put the header as well or let's see if we have an option max rows max column row six six let's see what do we have although i'll not specify that but let's run this again ah so it's not putting the header so I do have a utility function that convert record set object to an array and then put the data but ideally we can just do like let's copy that function as I have that, so I'll just import this fx collection and record set to array. Let's see. Okay, so record set to 2 array. As this was a pub private function, that's why I couldn't find that from this edit here. Okay, so I don't need this shown anymore. Okay, so this is record set to 2D array. It just convert that record set to a 2D array. So just let me give you a close look on this. So it just check that if it's nothing, then exit function. If record count is zero, then exit function. So it will be really empty. Now we get the record count, and then we are saying that record count plus one for the header. Then we are filling the header and then we are looking through till the end of the record set and adding those data into this array and returning at the end so we could just say okay so we get that so let's see we can use that so set one dot cells clear so this will clear out the old data set one dot range a1 let me just roll result equals to record set to 2d array and this will be the record set and now resize record set to record count plus one in the header set dot fields count dot value equals to result okay so if i just run this now and go back then we'll have that header as well like this okay so this is a very simple example now let's say if i just want to get the data up to column z right so i could specify that here that okay i need only the data from a to z 10 that's the first 10 rows so let me run now if i go back then you'll see that i do have the data up to column j and 10 rows only so that is the second part of this video that if you want to get data from a predefined range then you can use like this if you have a name range you can replace this with name range as well okay so that's it for this video in the next video we are going to learn how to get data from those small columns like let me just show you the problem and why i'm recording that particular video so let's suppose if I just change this to instead of sample columns to more calls, right? I'm expecting that it should return me a full 1563 columns of data. But if you look at this, then you can see it's only returning up to column 255 columns. And that's the limitation of this ADODB that you can only retrieve up to 255 columns at a time. So the next video is on that topic, how can we overcome that particular problem and then pull all the data instead of up to 255. So that's it for this video, keep watching for the next tutorial, have a good day.